Hey YouTube, um, this is Itchy and I wanted to bring you up to date on some information that I read today off the EPA's website. And I've been um, toying with the idea of doing a daily forecast or weekly forecast, trying to alert people to areas where radiation is high and has the potential for fallout. And hopefully most of you are aware that um, precipitation washes radiation out of the atmosphere so anything that's up in our jet stream or up in our atmosphere the rain and the snow will bring that down to the ground um, where it, it's picked up on our clothes we come in contact with it we breathe it in um, it gets onto our food sources onto our pets and on and on and on I've been waiting seven months for somebody to start doing this um, somebody that our taxes already pay for like the EPA and they're publishing the graph data because they have to, um, but they're not giving any kind of analysis. And I've been watching the graphs, and I've been alerting people that I know of the areas that um, that you know where the the risk is high and and where the numbers are high. And I'm going to get to that in a moment. Um, what alarmed me today was some information uh, coming out of North Carolina. I wanted to just talk to you for a moment about the jet stream. And the jet stream exists in our atmosphere um, because of the rotation of the Earth, and there tends to be a band in each polar region and a band that's in the subtropical region. Um, so two bands for each hemisphere. And the one that, um, that we're the most concerned with in North America happens to be coming directly from Japan to us. You know, sometimes it's uh, taking a little detour up by Alaska, uh, right now, it seems to be smacking right on top of Canada, and this is a water vapor map. I like the three-dimensional look to this, just to see what's going on precipitation-wise. This area of the country right now should be on alert, and we'll look at the graphs in a moment. I wanted you also to pay attention what's going on in this area, okay? It's the 17th of October, but there was just a huge band that moved through this area. And I looked it up after I saw the graphs today to see what could possibly account for such high readings. And I want to share this website with you, too. Um, this is the quickest, easiest way to get to the EPA data. It's through this guy's blog. Um, the EPA has made it quite cumbersome to try to navigate the website, but uh, he's been putting together these graphs for months. So we'll let it load. And hopefully you've already taken a look at these. If you're friends with me on Facebook, I post them probably once a week. Okay, right off the top, we've got San Bernardino. Now, on the graph, this is 300, right about here, okay? And the EPA's own website states that if you are a firefighter, you are fighting a fire at a nuclear reactor, and your Geiger counter reads 300 counts per minute, you need to don radioactive um, protection, clothing, masks, apparatus, everything, okay? So keep that number in mind as we go through these graphs. Anchorage, well, my personal opinion is uh, this graph is probably not reading properly because this is what I would expect to see on normal background radiation from sources such as, you know, our Earth's crust, you know, um, uh, mineral deposits that give off radiation naturally, things are in our environment um, besides the radiation coming from Fukushima atmospheric testing fallout from the 60s. I mean, you, you name it, you know, we've got labs and new plants all over the place and there's fires and venting to the atmosphere that hear, you hear about all the time, usually not till months after it happens. But this should give you an indication of what a normal graph looks like without highly dangerous levels. Okay, Fairbanks a little bit higher. Juno, beta count's been disabled. Birmingham, Alabama, disabled, and the gamma count's high, so I'm assuming the beta count's going to be high too. Doesn't necessarily follow that logic, uh, but it'd be better if all these graphs work, especially since our tax 
dollars are supposed to be paying for them. Fort Smith, Arkansas. Okay, this um, this reading, which looks like it was the 16th, and we're at you know, 400, 450. So there should have been alerts issued all these days where these spikes are telling people to keep you know, sick elderly people and young children inside because they are most susceptible to the effects of even low levels. These aren't low levels. These are high. Yeah, spikes in Arizona, Tucson. I mean, you're going to see some stuff, some really scary stuff here if you haven't looked at these before. Look at this. You know, we're pushing 650 in Yuma. You know, I'm, the only thing that I can... Um, draw from this graph is the jet stream doesn't tend to dip this low except from certain situations and so there's fallout either being deposited in this area on an intermittent basis or there's something leaking in this area on an intermittent basis that's causing these kinds of readings. You know that's all you can assume it's not like you're gonna get a straight answer out of our government or out of anybody. Um, Fresno, you know, disabled, ba gamma counts high, Los Angeles, high, Riverside, you know, look at Sacramento, San Francisco, I mean, give me a break, like, this is right. It's better than being in Canada where they don't tell you anything. Um... But I know lots of good people that are working on that. Here we've got a pretty big spike in Denver. I've got a cousin in Denver that I saw yesterday. Miami. I none of the graphs work in Florida. I don't know why. And we're getting to the good stuff here. Des Moines. You know where where have they had all the rain this year? Iowa, Nebraska, Idaho, you know, Montana, Chicago. Wouldn't it be nice to know what it is in Chicago? Fort Wayne, you know, and, and what's this? You know, is this graph being reset? Is it broken now too? All of this, this isn't, this isn't normal. I'll scroll a little faster through here. I don't want to make these videos longer than five minutes. And we're already at eight minutes, so speed things up. This is my home state. And uh, just for the record, I've been posting these high levels in not only Bay City, but in Grand Rapids, um, close by where I have other family. I've been posting them on Channel 7 WXYZ's website and I posted them so much that they kicked me off their website because apparently they don't want to talk about it. And I'm going to just take a moment to, you know, here we go, North Carolina. Okay, what the hell is this? This is off the graph. And now, I've been watching these graphs since March. Um, they were taken offline for about two months when the really, really, really intense cover-up was going on. And we've got between the 16th and 17th. I mean, it's off the graph. At 1,000 CPM and, and uh, people should not be leaving their houses, okay? Nobody should be. But, you know, what do you think that'll do to our economy? This is very alarming. Now I did jump over to a map that uh, I saw last night from Pink Safaret. It's a plant of our, uh, a map. Sorry, of all the new plants in the world. There's four in the southern hemisphere and 700 in the northern hemisphere. Okay. The ones that are red, 
dots are either shut down or they're having some kind of emergency. You know, right now I happen to know there aren't any plants that I am aware of besides the ones that have been blacked out in the media. Um, Cooper Nuclear and Fort Calhoun that's been flooded since, I don't know, May, end of April. Okay, that's probably these two red ones, but I want to get into North Carolina here real quick and, and show you what is directly upwind of Raleigh. Yeah, St. Louis has got to watch out too because Potter Blog's been posting, uh, a citizen scientist has been posting some very alarming data uh, coming out of the rain in St. Louis. And I've got links to all these videos um, on my YouTube and I'm starting to put them all on Facebook too. Here's Rally, where we've got the off the graph reading from the last two days. And here's a new plant. Now, because it's green, it is supposed to be operating properly. Um, these plants do vent routinely to the atmosphere, although people are not told that. And when they are told, it's always, oh, they're not levels that are harmful to the public in any way. You know, that's debatable. Um, even low levels of radiation are extremely harmful to children, and there is already evidence on both coasts and in Philadelphia, where the highest drinking water measurements have been since Fukushima, of an increased mortality rate around 40%. And that is not only for women who are, are pregnant and having miscarriages and, and premature babies. This is for infants 12 months and, old, and older, or younger, I'm sorry. Um, it's very alarming data, and it's something that every OBGYN should be talking about, and they're not either. So this plant, um, I would call them or email them, but I can tell you right now they won't respond because I've already been round and around and around with the plants in my home state of Michigan, and they won't talk about it. So if you're in this area, I'm going to see what I can find out from other sources of what would cause that graph to be that high. It's a possibility that the, the graph isn't functioning properly, but I have not seen it that high since Fukushima. And I did jump over to the RSOE EDIS website where you can find out anything that is going on anywhere in the world that could be uh, an alert or anything harmful. Um, they have airline accidents on here. They have uh, biological hazards, forest fires, floods, you name it. Anytime there is a nuclear alert, there will be a symbol. We had one two days ago here in Ohio when they discovered a 30 foot long crack in um, I believe it was the Bessie reactor it's right on Lake Erie and there's a 30 foot long crack in the containment unit there that's gonna cost about a billion dollars to fix now it's been taken off the map um, I posted about this two days ago when I saw it I doubt they fixed that crack already um, but there doesn't seem to be any indication that anything was going on in the, the plants in or around North Carolina. Um, so I'll see what else I can find out about for that. The jet stream water vapor analysis that we looked at um, before is mostly going to be hitting smack dab into this area of Canada over the next few days, and then it'll be flowing down this way. Any precipitation tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your co-workers, anyone who has young children, do not let their kids play out in the rain. Any outerwear should be uh, left at the front door or in the garage. You should be washing your cars even after a rainstorm before you pull it in the garage because you're tracking these particles into your house. If you've got pets, they're tracking them into your kids' beds. Your kids are breathing them in. It's everywhere, and we really need to start taking steps to minimize our exposure and our children's exposure. But people cannot do that unless they know that there's a problem. And it's not coming from our media or our government. They've had seven months to try to straighten this out, and the numbers are getting higher, getting worse. I'll keep you guys updated. I will try to post something uh, every couple of days, and I'm going to leave you with this cesium dispersion map from Arriva. 
showing their um, their fallout from Fukushima.